Welcome to the Globe Girl Podcast. I'm Kyra Mitchell Lewis, and thank you all for joining. Hope everyone is doing well. I hope you are having a good week so far. Um, so, I am coming to you on a day that's not Thursday. So, I'm excited to share some new news with you. Um, Globe Girl Podcast is going to be expanding. Um, and it's going to include some solo episodes with me, um, just us friends talking about something that is near and dear to my life and something that I really enjoy helping others with. Um, that is career development. So bear with me because it is going to be slightly different from the Thursday episodes, which will still come out on Thursday. So I'll still be bringing you all the inspiring guests that I have had the fortunate pleasure of meeting and interviewing. Those interviews will still show up on Thursdays, but we will take a different journey on Tuesdays where we will talk about our careers. We'll talk about ways, um, topics that, some topics that I've already put together, but certainly I'm always so um, open to hearing about things that you all would like to talk about more. Um, so let's start. Let's backtrack. Let's rewind, so to speak. Insert rewind, rewind noise. <laughs> let's rewind back a little bit and let me tell you about my background and why this is important to me. So for many of you who know, those who don't know, I have worked in the marketing and the communications um, industry for more than 20 years. Um, I have worked on B2B and B2C, um, in B2B and B2C and B2B industries. Um, I started my career many, many years ago. So my discipline was speech communications and I have an uh, emphasis in public relations. As most people know, the thing you go to school for often, you never end up doing. So I went to school, got an internship, as many of us do, started to work for a PR agency. I worked there for my internship. They hired me on full time. And then I worked there for a year. And then I was introduced to a different, a new opportunity working um, as a marketing coordinator. So that was the job that actually opened up the beginning of so much for me. Um, lots of learnings and really has spurred my development in the marketing industry. So I have worked from, started as a marketing coordinator. I've been an assistant marketing manager. I've been a marketing manager, senior, I've been a director. And now currently I'm in a new position um, that I had just started in May um, as a head of integrated marketing for an e-commerce um, company. So lots, lots of background there. But, you know, one thing that's always been at the heart for me, um, especially as it relates to people and really, you know, women, being a woman myself is really helping others and those who I have been entrusted with as a manager to help them discover their strengths and how they can apply those to their career. So uh, I think you can ask anybody who has ever been on a leadership, a team that I've managed or um, has worked with me. I've always really tried to help people discover uh, the thing that makes them unique. I think that's really important. And then also, how can you apply that into the workplace? Um, I mean, I've worked to help someone develop a job that didn't even exist based on the strengths that she had. So I think that um, I think that people understand, especially women, um, no offense, men, um, but I think for women to understand truly what they bring to the table and what makes them unique from other others in the workforce is I think once you ignite that, it's so important. So that just tells you So you can kind of get a feeling for like the why, the why this is important to me. Um, and over the next few weeks, next few months, we're going to talk about a varied assortment of 
topics as it relates to you doing these three things in your career. Um, elevating in your current career role um, or position. Um, two, uh, figuring out whether what you're doing today is the right thing for you. Um, are you finding purpose in it? Do you feel happy doing it? Um, are you not sure, but you're trying to figure out? And then third is, nope, this is not it. It's not purpose. Um, I need to pivot. And I, so I hope that these conversations that we will have over um, this time will sort of help you to also be able to identify where you might fall in what you can do to find that purpose and happiness in your career. Because I'm here to tell you, like, if you're not happy and finding joy in what you do every day, um, I mean, obviously, it can make it, it. It's ten times worse than the Sunday scaries, is what I would say. All right, so today we're actually going to talk about starting before you're ready. Now, starting before you you're ready can mean a lot of things, right? You have to pardon me. I'm just looking down at some notes here that I wrote. Don't want to leave anything out. It can mean a lot of things to a lot of people, but like I said, we're going to keep it here at the career level. So it could mean taking a job or a role that you may not feel 100% qualified for just yet, right? It could mean starting a project that you might not have all the pieces and parts. Um, Lord knows, I don't know about you, but how many times have you started a project where it's very gray? I know I've, I've never gotten all the pieces and parts to actually start a project. Now that's a, that's a side note. <laughs> Um, or it could be making a leap into a new career. And that has happened a lot, as we know, over the last uh, two and a half years. Um, I have a really good friend who worked, actually was my manager um, at my last job and just totally just left marketing and went and started a different career and has found success there. Now, she's still doing marketing as a part of um, being a realtor, but I think it's really cool that she was able to pivot and um, to find joy and find the thing that would make her happy um, in life. All right. So I know when you hear start before you're ready, when you hear some of those things that I just talked about as it relates to, you know, a position or a project, probably more daunting when you're thinking about, I'm going to take a promotion that I'm not sure that I'm ready for, or I'm applying for a job that I'm not 100% sure that I'm ready for. I know that's that's what it could look like. It can still also look like the project, right? Could be you leading a project that you're just like, whoa, not really ready. And I'd have to say, like, I've probably experienced like all of those things I put my glasses on because I, I can't see um, that ooh, paper's a lot clearer now, people. <laughs> um, I would probably say like we've all we've all been there, right? Um, we've all had the project that you're like, oh, you're gonna be the project lead on. I remember, for example, um, my company wanted to create, uh, so we wanted to create what I'm simply going to call a uh, loyalty program, but they didn't want to call it a loyalty program because it was going to somewhat be offensive to our customers, they thought, to call it a loyalty program. But no one really knew that because we hadn't really asked them that, but that's, that's something for another day. But it was pretty much just dropped into dropped on my plate as a project for me to lead and to, to do. And I was like, well, I've never started a loyalty program at all. Um, so, but I just took a step back I got all the thoughts, organized, um, what I understood the objective to be, and then, you know, and, and created a plan to move forward. So it wasn't pretty, and there were a lot of, lot of ups and downs, lots of ups and downs along the way, but it was, um, 
pretty cool. And probably one of the coolest things that I've actually had the ability to work on because it's really awesome when you can create something from scratch that like other people um, haven't like haven't done yet. So that's just that's one example, friends, one example. But what I'd like to do with you is share a few things that I think you can do to that will help you start before you're ready when you think about your career. Um, one is get off the sidelines and get into the game. Uh, you have to really commit. You have to commit to it. Uh, just like I just said, you know, I committed to this project. Wasn't sure if I could do the project. Didn't have any experience doing it, but I committed to it. Also, there are a lot of times, you know, when I've been in a lot of jobs in my career where people have left, um, you know, I worked at one job where there were layoffs and my manager, who was a VP, was a part of the layoffs. And I was immediately just like, you know, didn't have a boss. And, you know, I just, but I remembered, I remembered the thing that you know, all the lessons, all the things that I had learned. And sometimes you just have to be ready to like step into it, um, scared, afraid and all. <laughs> so I did, that's, that's just what you do. And also, you know, when you're stepping, you have to remember to give yourself grace because we don't know all the things we're often learning as we're doing. I definitely learn by doing. We're oftentimes learning while we're in the process. So give yourself that grace, um, allow yourself to, you know, make mistakes. I always tell my team that, you know, as long as we didn't burn the building down, I mean, we should be able to come back from it. But also, you know, with that being said, just remain, you know, if you're going to commit to it, then you also have to commit to being accountable for it and owning it. And that's really important. So that's, Number that's my step number one is um, when you're starting before you're ready is get off the sidelines and get in the game. Commit. Two is ask clarifying questions. I had a manager, shout out to Christy, um, <laughs> who told me a long time ago. Um, she was like, you've always got to ask clarifying questions. Like, don't leave the room until you 100 percent understand what is expected, what information will help you get to the next step or build your plan or, you know, your strategy. Um, don't leave the room without asking clarifying questions. And I think like when I was younger in my career, it was, it was harder, you know, it was harder because sometimes you're in the room with people who, you know, are maybe, you know, more senior to you. And you're like, oh, I don't want to ask a question because I don't want to sound dumb. But, you know, um, I always say, listen, definitely engage in active listening. I'm an active listener. Um, I listen and I observe first. And then I write notes as I'm like, listening to someone to speak or give some direction or, you know, saying, this is what I like, you know, these are our objectives, goals, whatever. Um, and then you formulate, you don't always have to be quick to speak, but I think just actively listening and writing some notes and asking clarifying questions. And then you also can circle back always and ask questions as well. I think you have to be able to understand the clarifying questions helps you to understand what success looks like. So if you are someone, you know, so that's as it relates to a project, but as it relates to saying your career, I mean, if you know that I would like to do this thing, or I would like to understand what it would take for me to be promoted in this area or what my career path looks like, then just ask the clarifying ask clarifying questions because nine out of 10 times, um, a good manager will be able to like, you know, a good manager, a good company will have some plans in place. They'll be able to talk you through what that looks like. Um, and then sometimes the blueprint doesn't exist. So sometimes you have to be willing to build that, um, as well. But I think number one is, you know, 
is understanding, you know, asking the right questions in order to understand what success might look like for you as it relates to elevating in your career. And then also, if you're someone who is saying, I'm not quite sure, I don't know if this is the right thing for me, then I think you still have to ask yourself, you have to ask yourself clarifying questions about, you know, what fuels me? And do I feel passionate about this job or this career, this position I'm in? Um, you know, am I excited to come here? What problems am I solving or what am I able to add to the business? I think you have to almost develop this list of questions for yourself that helps you to know whether this is the thing you should be doing. Um, and then lastly, you know, also if you're somewhere where you feel like, oh, this just isn't like, this is not it. It's time for me to like pivot then I think you have to ask yourself, you know, a, a similar set of questions. Of what are the things that get me excited? What do I enjoy doing? Um, what lights, you know, what fuels my passion? What makes me really excited? And I think all asking all those like clarifying questions will help you, whether you're dealing with a project at work or if you are thinking about, you know, elevating or moving within your career. All right. Number three is something that is, I always say, remain curious and get ready to learn and grow. So if you are starting before you're ready um, into, say, a position or starting on a project or starting in a new with a new company, I think you always have to be committed to the experience of learning and being curious and just working on self-development. Don't wait for your company to, you know, set up LinkedIn learning. Don't wait for your company to find you some seminars or your manager. Like, I mean, yes, good managers and good companies will do that. They will have those learning opportunities available. But if you're in the place where you may not have that um, facilitated on your behalf, get out there and look for conferences. I mean, obviously we all know there's a lot of free content on the internet. Um, LinkedIn obviously has a lot of great learning opportunities as well that you can um, use to, to, to develop, but definitely like, you know, reach out, reach out to, you know, your, um, reach out to your network, um, you know, find some courses, find a mentor. Definitely always say like, find a mentor is super key, especially when you're trying to figure out, you know, what, you know, might be next or set up, you know, set up a bunch of informal, like um, meet and greets with people who are doing something like similar to what you want to do. Um, I know people, a lot of pe people are busy, but I think that People who love to pour into other people um, about what it is they do and how to help somebody else, like learn more about it or get into it or, you know, transition. People, most people I find will be very open to that and very open to um, networking and doing an informal um, meet and greet with you. Um, also, get a coach, get a career coach. Um, Get someone that can help you to determine, you know, what those next steps might look like for you, how to help you uncover like the things that you're really good at. Because I'm here to tell you that a lot of times we're not able to decipher like when we're inside of something like that's true for a lot of things. It's true for, you know, those who may be entrepreneurs, um, you know, like I said, as an entrepreneur myself. A lot of times inside of your business, when you're in it every day, it's very hard to get to the thing because you're in the thing all the time. So you have blinders on. So think about, you know, meeting up with someone, you know, meeting someone potentially on LinkedIn and, you know, trying to do informal 
informal meet and greets to learn more about an industry you might be interested in, to understand what that skill set looks like. Um, also look for conferences or networking events. Um, and, you know, there every, you know, things are happening in person again and things are still happening virtually. So, I mean, the world's still really big and a lot of people are still connecting online. And so you can still do that if you are not ready to take a step of like, meeting in person with people, you know, if you're like, "Ah, I'd rather do it virtually, that still exists. Still lots of people out there um, willing to have those conversations. But the takeaway, my friends, is think about your self-development, commit to being curious and learning. All right. So number four is develop an action plan with anything. It's not just working on a project, it's thinking about your career. I mean, you have to develop a plan. You have to have a plan of attack of how you want to build, um, what you want to happen next. Uh, And I think that's really important is to sort of figure that out, get a framework, um, determine what that framework is, build it out, and then have some steps to get you there. I always say with anything, um, you have to have an action plan. You can't just jump into anything cold and expect for it to just work because unfortunately, that just that just isn't true. Just doesn't happen like that. <laughs> it just doesn't happen like that. Hey, set up a Trello board, set up um, Airtable, Monday, whatever it is you need to do. But, you know, set, develop an action plan with some goals and um and some, some, some tactics and strategies to help you um, meet those goals for yourself. All right, so just the replay, we've got one, get off the sidelines and get in the game. Pardon me, get committed. Number two, ask clarifying questions. So you are clear about what success looks like for you. Three, remain curious and get ready to learn. Get committed to learning, networking, um, self-development. Four, develop an action plan so you will know what your end goal looks like and what it takes to get there. And five, the last thing is simply, my friends, is just to start. It is just taking that step forward to start towards the dream, the career that you want for yourself. So give you another um, personal example for me today. This starting this um, portion of the podcast and going into more of these solo episodes is just a start for me. It's me taking a step forward because I want to, you know, I want to offer um, up this knowledge that I have. I mean, we're just friends here talking after all, but just some of these experiences that I've had in my career. Um, You know, I have been in this business with Globe Girl for since 2020, started it right at the time of the pandemic. And my business has gone through a lot of different iterations, uh, a lot of things that I've wanted to do. I'll start the podcast, got that Um, you know, started a learning um, platform last year um, that really was like, eh, maybe it's not time. People are like all online all the time learning things, and maybe people are just getting tired of that. So, you know, queue up 2022 um, as I started to think about my business and what I wanted it to become and where I thought I could have the most impact. I think there's still lots of impact with my podcast. I love doing the podcast. I love the episodes that I bring you on Thursdays where I get to bring all these wonderful and amazing people who are doing similar things to like, I think a lot of us listening and offering up that, you know, tactical, like tangible advice about things that we can do and how we can get to, how we can improve and and grow in certain areas of our lives. But for me, you know, as I started to think about it, you know, what exactly, what impact could I have in helping women and especially helping young women in their careers? And so is this me taking the step forward and starting, um, in a space that feels scary for me, you know, is to offer service myself of coaching um, young women um, in their careers. So 
we friends are doing it together. So you might be there today. You might be saying, you know, I'm falling in one of these, Kyra, I hear you. I'm falling in one of these, like, one of these categories of like, you know, I find purpose in my job. I'm satisfied. And I just want to elevate up to the next level. I need a plan. I need to figure out how to do that. Or you're saying too, you know, mm, I'm okay right now, but I don't know if it's going to bring me satisfaction forever, but today I'm okay. But I would like to figure out like what might be the next step, um, you know, if I decide to do something different. And then third, you might be like, girl, it is time for me to get out. Like I am totally in the wrong career. Can't do this anymore. Um, I'm ready for a change. So you may fall into one of those um, one of those buckets. And, you know, the conversations and chats we have here weekly um, will service to help you figure that out. All right. (laughs) I'm not accustomed to doing all the talking. So you have to bear with me, especially not being the solo person on the screen as well. So you have to bear with me, friends. Um, So where does that leave us now? So where we are now is um, I hope that you all, you know, took something from today's message. Um, I am certainly, well, I would certainly love to hear your feedback. I would love to hear any um, topic ideas that you may have, you can you can email me at hello at glowupgirl.com. You can visit the website at glowupgirl.com. You can, you'll find past podcast episodes. You'll also find all of our social links and a whole lot of stuff there that helps you with personal development um, as well. Um, for anyone who this message may resonate with and you might be saying, Hmm, I don't know. I don't know where I fall. Am I, am I, do I fall in one of those categories? You can check the notes in the show link. There's a link to a free quiz, free quiz. It's like a 10 question quiz that will help you determine where you might fall in the satisfied and purpose, elevate up, satisfied, maybe not sure if it's the purpose. Eh, We'll see. And third, Nope, not the purpose, not satisfied, time to pivot category. And from there, you know, if you are interested in talking to me and about how to progress in your career, I am ready to have a 15 minute um, chat with you to sort of understand what you think your career goals might be to help you figure out what strengths do you have? What makes you unique from those around you and how can you add that, um, take those skills and turn it into a career that you love. So all that being said, my friends, I think that this episode, one of our career chats is done. (laughs) I think I'm all talked out. I actually need to drink some water here (laughs) pretty soon, but I'm so thankful as always for all of the support that you all give and for you showing up for me. And I hope that I'm able to show up for you in a way that is meaningful and provides impact um, for you as well. So I will see you on Thursday. Don't forget, come back on Thursday to hear an interview with one of my amazing guests and then come back here on Tuesday for another talk about your how to elevate in your career. Next week, we're gonna be talking about uh, a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Are you a leader or are you a gap filler? So until next time, stay focused, fab, and glow up. Take care, everyone. <laughs>